Hey everyone, happy release day for the Southeast Asian Animal Pack. Um, I'm not going to be highlighting all of the animals in the pack today. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of videos um, and habitat builds and things like that in your timeline. Uh, I am going to highlight some of the other features that do come along with this update. Um, but I thought I'd start here at least and show off the uh, the dowel since um, it's applicable to the um, Asian Highlands exhibit that Carlos built for us in the last episode. Um, so it's great to have the actual species that's supposed to go in this habitat. Um, I think they announced this DLC like a couple days after this video released, so it was perfect timing. Uh, you know, it would have been great to have them for that episode, but um, it's just really cool now that it's got the uh, correct species in here. So. Uh, the DLC comes with um, quite a few animals. It's more than usually it comes with, but it does not come with any scenery pieces. So you get a clouded leopard, a sun bear, a binturong, a probiscus monkey, a Malayan tapir, the dowel, uh, the bobby rusa, and the giant Malaysian leaf insect is an exhibit animal. So uh, if you are the type of person who plays Planet Zoo purely for the animals, this DLC is a dream come true and something that you've probably been clamoring for. Um, if you're someone who really likes the scenery pieces, then there's not really much in, you, in this for you. Um, if you are a mix of both, then it's probably still worth picking up this DLC just to have the additional species uh, in the game. So um, yeah, they, these ones I think are really, really well done. Like I said in episode 13, I wasn't really familiar with um, these animals prior to working on this exhibit. So um, yeah, they're a great addition. And in episode uh, 14, which will be coming out later today, um, we have another guest builder, uh, Wyatt Andrews, who is um, going to really um, elevate a lot of the existing habitats in the zoo and then episode 15 i'll be working on giving these guys a little more space as well as the um the highlands over here so anyway that is the extent that i'm going to show you the animals today let's take a look at some of the other uh, additions to the dlc so i think the most important um for everyone in terms of creativity are the screens that come in the game now um, so you can play movies or just put images on these screens uh, they come in a lit version and an unlit version and the largest one is 32 meters so it's massive um, you could use this for a number of different things uh, i know in planet coaster a lot of people use these things for um, like building facades, like fake, you know, fake backdrops and backstages and things like that. Um, and similar, uh, you know, application for these ones as well. Um, one thing that I, in this last episode of uh, Tivoli Zoo, I was working on the the rest of the um, uh, dis, uh, tropical discovery. And I was having a really hard time finding examples of like the painted backdrops that you'll see, the painted landscapes you'll see in the, you know, that cover the walls of certain habitats that are indoors or um, even um, certain sections of outdoor habitats. And um, what I ended up landing on was just using the game itself. So, you know, depending on the biome you're looking for, for a specific species, you could go, these are our poor examples. I just took a quick photo of a, um, of a biome but you could go in and you know make this thing look really lush look make it look exactly like the animal's native habitat then just take a photo in the game plop it on one of these screens and then you can put it against the backdrop of the habitat um, in lieu of uh, finding you know paint examples of those paintings on like google image search uh, the other benefit is if you have uh, the geforce experience you can uh, use the filters and there's a watercolor filter and a painting filter so you can even kind of make these look like paintings in the background. Um, and the other application, and this is actually uh, Wyatt, who's on episode 14 of Tivoli Zoo, this was his idea, was that you can use these screens just for fake habitats. Um, and so I just took a quick video of um, an aquarium, you can see it'll loop there. But this is a great use for these screens. Um, you know, it it breaks the immersion a little bit because obviously this is real fish and it doesn't look anything like the you know how the game looks but um, even still if you're just looking for something that's a little bit better than some static scenery pieces that are in an implied habitat um, something like this is an awesome awesome use of these screens um, one thing to note with them is they have to be in this format a dot webm format for the videos 
Um, I tried loading an MP4 in and it did not work, so I had to convert it to a uh, .webm. Um, the images, though, can come in a variety of formats, and it shows you here uh, what the images can be in, which is nice. And then it shows you the sample dimensions for the wide, tall, and square billboards as well. So really user-friendly. Um, you should know if you're you know, adept at Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator, uh, that's all the specs you're going to need there to make these things look really good. Um, another thing you should be aware of as you're utilizing these is the image does lose some of its fidelity from like the original image compared to what it looks like on the screens in the game. Same thing happened with Planet Coaster. Um, so there are creative ways to adjust the image. I think you actually end up making them brighter um, in Photoshop and then they'll be a little more true to color in the game. Uh, don't don't hold me to that. It's been a while since I've done those edits uh, like I did in Planet Coaster. So another uh, three little screens here. So I think we already had this one in game or, or maybe it was this one um, for the habitat signs. And uh, this is a four meter, a two meter and a one meter, which is fantastic. Um, and I just downloaded a little like point of sale system image. So these would be perfect for, you know, doing custom um, shops and uh, custom restaurants and things like that. You could have an or even ticket booths. Um, you can have a little monitor there with an actual screen image on it. Um, these ones that are next size up for, again, for like quick service restaurants and stuff, you could put up a menu that's a digital menu. Most, um, you know, I think even, even most zoos nowadays have something like this instead of a static menu, uh, something that they can update frequently. And then this size is good for, again, um, these are a little bit big for maybe uh, an implied habitat, but these ones are probably perfect, these four meter ones. Um, so you can use them for that, or you can just use them for uh, custom billboards. Uh, if you wanted to have advertisements around your zoo or, you know, if you're like my zoo and you've got a whole sort of world that exists outside of your zoo, then, um, you know, you could use these to, to create billboards and just add to, uh, to the immersion of your project. Um, so that is pretty much it for the additions of the scenery. Um, one other thing I really wanted to highlight was now you can change uh, the colors of the water, which is a uh, honestly, when they first announced it, I kind of shrugged my shoulders and didn't think it would be something I would utilize that much. But now that I've seen um, how it works and how it looks, it's definitely something that's um, a great addition to the game. So now you've got this option where you can select a body of water. Uh, and then you can go in and it gives you the overview of it shows you you know if you're playing like in franchise or something it tells you all these facts about the body of water um, and then you can get into here and it, so that's the default the natural color and then they have some presets which is nice so you have dirty water um, Everglade Amazon tropical uh, I think the tropical is nice. It has, especially if you put like a fake bottom in your pools um, and color it blue like that, it really does look like artificial, an artificial body of water. Um, there's crystal and there's a whole bunch more. I'm not going to go. These ones are crazy too. You get pip shot and gulpy. Um, but the few that I've tried that I really like is the Amazon, not necessarily for this habitat, but if you have, um, I'll show you. So we'll go back and just set this to the natural, but I already did this with, uh, some of the water in the African Savannah. So in here I did the Amazon default. Um, and so it just show it makes it look like there's maybe some sediment in there. I mean, most zoos I've been to, this water isn't crystal clear. Um, you know, it's it doesn't have like disease or anything like that in it, but it's also not completely clear. So um, little things like this are a welcome addition that I honestly didn't think I would be, um, you know, I, I didn't think that I would use it or, or be uh, as surprised by it as I was. Um, like I said, I'm sure there will be plenty of reviews of all the animals out on YouTube today. Um, stay tuned in a few hours. There will be a new episode of Tivoli Zoo out. 
Uh, but yeah, I, I think these screens are an awesome addition to the game, um, have a ton of usefulness, a ton of different a- applications, and I'm sure um, a lot of creative people will come up with even better ways to uh, to use them. So uh, thank you guys so much for sticking around for the video. And again, check out episode 14 of Tivoli Zoo coming out later today. Enjoy the DLC.